All right, let's talk about the big picture, and I'm going to come over to the other side for a moment of the country. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to bring up a bigger view, and we're going to check in on the satellite imagery that is overhead for today, which really still shows a very dramatic image on here, because when you take a look at this as a whole, you can still see Helene. Let's swing that vantage point around now. This is a front-facing view. This is high-resolution satellite imagery from within the last 30 minutes. That's what we look like right now from the space station. Clearly, Helene is overwhelmingly obvious now, just a falling apart uh, area of low pressure. And that is now, at least in terms of the storm's ability to continue to wreak havoc, is far lessened from where it was. If you look off the coast for us, there's not a whole lot going on off the Pacific at this point. So let's come back home for the closer view and talk about this warm-up that is coming our way. And that is the headline. Weekend's going to be really nice. We have to get you ready for Monday and Tuesday of next week. The temperatures Monday and Tuesday are really going to spike, but let's go in order because you have a weekend coming first. So we'll get you ready for that. Weekend's going to be cooler than today. And just for a little bit of perspective, how did we do today? These were the numbers. We had quite a little warm up today. And what we're doing right now is a bit of a seesaw. Today was a really noticeable warm up after yesterday's noticeable cool down. Now we're going to go right back down again for the weekend, for at least two days. In order to see that play out, let's get our view out here for a second. Because while there isn't much in the way of the marine layer today, we are going to have some as we get into tomorrow. So let's watch the clouds start to redevelop overnight tonight and start to build back in. We'll lose the numbers that we've got on there for today. And just look at tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. That's more than we had. That's about as far inland as the marine layer is going to be able to get tomorrow. But at least it is coming into the bay. And it shows you we're starting to get back to an onshore influence. Let's look at tomorrow's day time highs. The highs on Saturday, lower. So instead of being on the verge of 90 inland, the temperatures have gone back to the low 80s. San Jose, you'll do 81 tomorrow, and it's kind of nice now to visualize the Saturday color scheme. It's a little bit lighter looking. That's Saturday. Let's talk about the change. Sunday's going to be pretty similar to that too. Saturday and Sunday, the two days are almost identical. And since that is the case, look at the winds off the coast for today. And uh, for Saturday, this is the wind visualization for the first half of the week, and this is why we're cooling down. It's a bit of an onshore influence here. It's such a dramatic difference to see what the winds look like when you see them here in terms of how they're displayed from an onshore influence, and then you look at them on Tuesday. I'm just going to hit the button and switch it, so it's going to be like flipping a switch. And now you see Tuesday. That's pretty impressive from an offshore wind standpoint. Look what the winds are doing. Coming in from the Central Valley, sweeping through the bay, and then I can backtrack this like out past the Farallons, and there is a steady stream of offshore winds whipping out off the coast. Thankfully, this is not too intense, or we'd be talking about fire weather concerns. This is what it looks like. And you can al almost visualize the low relative humidities sweeping out over the ocean and drying out the landscape when the winds start doing this. That's not necessarily the primary concern with this on Tuesday. Instead, it's the warm-up. So remember the color scheme we were looking at and the visualization that we had on here? Let's put that on here now for Tuesday. It's going to be a lot more red because of what we were just seeing in terms of that offshore wind. And now the numbers are higher, like much higher than today. Those inland valleys unfortunately have to go back now to 103 by the time we get there. 102, 103 is coming your way for Livermore. San Jose at this point potentially could have a 100 degree day. We've reached the time of year now where San Jose's average daytime highs have been falling. You should be in the low 80s. So this is likely going to be another heat advisory from the National Weather Service. In fact, that's almost certain for heat advisory with a number like 100 for San Jose. We'll leave to the National Weather Service to see if they think more significant wording might even be needed for that. So here's the seven day forecast. Those are your inland valleys. You see the peak, now you see the cool down after that. So the good news is it doesn't last terribly long. I don't know how much that helps with that Monday, Tuesday forecast. Hopefully it helps some. San Jose, here's your number, 100 or 97. It's going to be close. The forecast models are splitting the difference and parsing out the specifics on it now. But either way, you are very close to 100. And San Francisco, always good to check in here on the city when you get into a spike like this, because when it hits 86 in San Francisco, that is a very telling number not only for the city, but for the entire beta. Oh, wow, it's almost 90 in the city today. This is relatively warm stuff.